Fiber friends. <laughs> Welcome to Pyramid Knits. My name is Liz. I am a knitter and a natural dyer based just outside of Taos, New Mexico. Um, I am coming to you today with a very special guest. This is Seymour. Seymour Butskins. <laughs> He's staying with me for the week. <laughs> Um, and I sat down to do the podcast and he walked over to me and did very sad little sounds. And said, but I want to be close. Can I be on your lap, please? You're the cat. <laughs> so he might just chill out here for a minute um, while we talk about some uh, yarn related things. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Oh, okay. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> He's been pretty good about the wool so far. He's been here for a few days and, you know, I mean, he has some interest, but he's not like obsessed or anything. So yeah. Little dude, also known as little dude. LD. Yeah, LD. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. He's very cute. Ooh. All right, so I have no oh. knitwear on today. I'm wearing a very old shirt from the bottom of my t-shirt drawer because it's like really nice out today. It's like really nice. I really should be outside doing things, um, but I'm not kind of because I have a puppy and another extra dog. This, this one came with a second. Um, so I have four dogs in my house right now. Uh, there was a, a moment there where I had five dogs in my house because I was also watching my dad's dog and that was just stupid. That was stupid. I just about lost my mind. Um, anyway, so now I just have a teething puppy who is just randomly chewing on me. It's great. Um, he is very cute though. Anyway, we're here to talk about yarn and knitting and all that good fiber fun stuff. Uh, so the last time I came to you, I was just about to go and be a vendor at the first inaugural Taos Wools Fest. Um, and I did such, and it was a great success. Um, yeah, we didn't really know what the turnout was going to be. You know, it's the first year. See how far you can get, uh, get news to travel of a new event. Uh, but it was a great turnout, and I think it's definitely going to happen again next year. Uh, so, yeah, and if I saw you at the festival, thank you so much for stopping by. I did have, like, people say, oh, oh, I've seen your podcast. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so weird. <laughs> That's like a whole new level. <laughs> um, sorry. Anyway, everybody I talked to was just like, so lovely and so wonderful. Um, and it was really just such a nice day. Oh, you baby. I didn't take any pictures. Um, Cause I was just vending by myself. I didn't have like a backup person or anything, uh, which next time I should have a backup person. So I can like go to the bathroom and refill my water bottle and <laughs> do things like that. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, I think he's getting tired. I think this is what a tired puppy looks like. Do you want to go find some place to lay down? Go on. Blink. <laughs> oh, little Seymour. Um, so yes. Taos Wolves Fest, great success. Very much looking forward to doing it again next year. Um, my online shop currently is offline. Uh, I have it in a vacation mode. I still need to do a post festival inventory and do some more photography. And I have some more yarn that didn't quite make it to the festival, but still needs photography. Um, <clears throat> and then once all of that is done, I will get all of that yarn up online. I'm looking at two like big bags of yarn right now. Um, so that needs to get out of my house so that I don't hit with it. 
Uh, so I'm getting right on that. That'll be up in the next couple of weeks. I'll be sure to pop it over here on YouTube and also on Instagram and let y'all know. Um, I do also now have a newsletter. So if you want to sign up for that, I will also send an email to your inbox letting you know whenever the shop goes live again. That link as well as other social media links, um, projects I've mentioned, yarns I'm mentioning, uh, are all going to be linked down below in the description box. So what am I talking about today? I, I've got two finished objects. I've got uh, one whip. Well, two whips, really. Um, some knitting plans. A new acquisition in the form of a gift. It's always great whenever people pay you in yarn. Whenever you watch their dogs. Love it. Um, I think my dad is finally starting to figure out that I'm easy to shop for. Just buy me yarn and I'll be happy. Uh, he went on a trip to Paris and he bought me some yarn. Not enough really to do anything with, <laughs> which we'll get to that. And I'm going to have to ask your opinion on patterns. Yeah. So, FOs. I was working on this in an attempt to finish it in time to wear at the Taos Wool's Fest. I failed in that endeavor. Uh, this was not ready, but I was knitting on it while I was there. But now it actually is done. It's my Corin cardigan. It's a pattern by Rebecca Klo of the Crayabea. Oh my gosh, I didn't even anticipate like how well this would actually match my outfit. So maybe I'll just wear this for a while. Um, I have not put the buttons on yet. I still have my little my little spots marked. I have to pick buttons yet. Oh, puppy's crying. I'll be right back. I knit this out of my own yarn, uh, my worsted base. It's a 100% US grown and spun Targi wool, non-superwash. And this is the colorway Brick, which I dyed with uh, Osage Orange and Cochineal. Um, a few things about the pattern. Let's see. Very straightforward, very enjoyable, easy to memorize, easy to read your knitting. Uh, that being said, I did mess up at some point and there's like a little jog. <laughs> jog in the lace but it was down towards the beginning and I think it's on the oh I see it I see it it's down here can you see it can you tell I don't know I don't know if you can I can't point it out from the back I don't think oh I think it's here just a little jog um and I didn't notice it until I was like up here or something and I was like you know what <laughs> it's fine it's just that little tiny section just at the very end that got off for like the last 10 repeats or something. Uh, so I just went and carried on and didn't bother. <laughs> didn't bother ripping back to fix that um, since it was just sort of right at the end there. And I was like, it's down towards the bottom. Blah. And I was trying to finish it in time for the festival, which I still didn't do. I definitely hit a point where I was like, I just want this done. I don't care, <laughs> like about perfection. <laughs> uh, so whatever I picked up for the uh, sleeves, there is no shaping in the sleeves, but I think my row gauge was a bit off from hers. So like my arm scythe depth ended up being a bit deeper than the pattern uh, anyway. So I was like, I'm going to end up picking up more stitches for the sleeve than the pattern calls for. Um, <clears throat> however, Rebecca did even put in a note in the pattern that said some of the testers liked a looser sleeve, like just heads up as an option. Uh, they thought that as written, it was too snug is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I was like, it could kind of go either way. I was like, maybe I'll just decrease out a couple of stitches and it'll be fine. And I'm not sure which one I did first, but I definitely decreased out a different number of stitches on 
each sleeve and it's like kind of a mess under there, <laughs> but it's under there. So who cares, right? <laughs> who cares? I just wanted it to be done. Um, so because of that, there, it does kind of, you can see the sleeve rides up just a little bit there. Whenever I hold my arm down, it comes up just a little bit. And I think that's just because I decreased out. So there's just less fabric. Um, whatever. It's fine. Uh, the other thing is I almost ran out of yarn. I was so close to running out of yarn. Um, I had one... I had one dye lot. I dyed this. I dyed one batch. That's all I had. And one of them was a 50 gram ball. It wasn't a full scan. It was just 50 gram. Um, that took the color way differently, way more of like a berry kind of red than more of the orangey uh, model thing I was going for, which as you may be able to see is what ended up being the button band. <laughs> because I ran out of the rest. I totally ran out of yarn. Um, I did not unravel my swatch, but I didn't think, I mean, the swatch wouldn't have been enough to do the whole button band on, you know, this V-neck card that goes all the way around, right? Uh, so, oh well. <laughs> I'm like a little bit disappointed that it's not the same you know, color all the way through and that you get this kind of different shade. But it's also just the button band and it also kind of looks cool that way. So there you go. So <clears throat> what I thought could be fun to do right now is to look for buttons for this cardigan with me. I have my grandmother's old button jar. And I have an old jar of my grandmother's in which I have started my own button jar. So what I'm going to do is dump out all of, I don't think I have enough of a set in mine. All of my buttons are kind of just like single buttons. There's, there's a couple things that are a set in there. Oh, those might be nice. Where did those come from? <clears throat> These are perfect. I don't even know where these came from. I don't know why I have these buttons because I would not have bought these. Like these are not my style. I would not have bought these buttons, but look at them. <laughs> They're perfect. And even I just saw them in the, in here from the back side, which I thought, Oh, that might, that might look nice with this which also would look real nice with this. But then I flip it around and it's like, oh, they're red. They're red buttons. I mean, those are the buttons for this cardigan, right? There's four and there's four. <laughs> Y'all, I was gonna pour out the whole button jar and do a whole sifting thing, but they were just right here. I mean, these are the buttons. I don't have to look any further. So I'll have to sew these on later. <laughs> Whoa. I wonder, huh? I mean, they must have been a gift from somebody or something. I know, honestly, I kind of like the not red side better, maybe. Either way, I think it would go really nice. What do you guys think? Red side, brown side. Red side? Brown side. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. But these are the buttons. Amazing. I have one other FO. It is hand spun socks. It's very exciting. Very exciting. I was wearing these around this morning, so they've got some hair on them. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I knit these up in the uh, DRK Everyday Sock pattern, which is a two by two sock with a flegal heel. Um, quite enjoyable. 
I think I will definitely uh, knit this sock pattern again in the future. It is two by two rib forever, which really kind of sucks. Um, but these are hand spun, so they did turn out a little bit thicker. They're definitely more of like a sport weight than a fingering weight. Uh, so I ended up knitting them on a size US 3 instead of, I would normally knit a sock on a US 1. So they are quite a bit thicker. You know, you can definitely see some thicker bits in there. Uh, so I didn't have as many stitches around. I don't remember. I think maybe it's 54 instead of my usual 64, something like that. Sorry about that. The puppy's just chewing on a box by the front door. It's very cute. He's laying in it and just nodding on the side. Uh, yes. Uh, DRK Everyday Socks, Flegal Heel. First time I've ever done a Flegal Heel. I kind of liked it. Uh, it also requires no picking up of stitches, which is why I don't, in the past, why I didn't like um, heel flap and gusset. Seymour. <sighs> to be fair, I haven't knit a heel flap and gusset in a very long time. I feel like I should try one again. Um, just because it's been a long time. I usually do a short row heel because I find it easy. I don't have to pick up stitches. There's none of that fiddling. I can just kind of like keep going. And the flegal heel was very much like that too. Um, you can just kind of keep going. And I can definitely see once I do it a couple of times um, that I'm gonna get the pattern down and I won't have to like refer to a pattern to um, do it either which I don't have to for a short row heel. I just do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the fiber that I spun this from is from uh, Tea Fueled Living. I am 90% sure. Uh, it is a colorway, something about a stegosaurus. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, it's super fun. I really enjoyed it. I loved the process of spinning it. Um, and the process of knitting it. I spun this as a traditional three ply and my intention had been to spin all three plies end to end the same so that it would be a stripe, you know, but there would be some variation, a little bit of muddiness in between the stripes, but that was my goal, right? <laughs> So the first ply that I spun was definitely a bit thicker than the second two plies that I spun. However, the second two plies that I spun were like almost identical in length. So like I got the consistency down on those, but the first, the first ply was a bit thicker. So you can see I started out here. Um, this was the beginning of the, <coughs> of the spin where everything started out at like just about the same color and everything's following sort of the same color thing. And then one of the plies starts to sort of get off from everybody else. <laughs> and then it's like there's two plies of one color and one ply of another color sort of going through the whole thing. And then it just keeps getting like further and further off as you go through until it's just like a crazy marl and there's like, there's still, stripes are still showing up because those two plies actually lined up together. So some of it is still, it's still striping, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I think this blue that's in, in here, that the two plies are blue, like I think that came up through right up in here with the first ply. It's just like, it's way, way off. Um, the other thing I did to like get all of my yardage that I could get out of this, I literally do not have a yard left. I just have scraps from weaving ends at this point. Um, <clears throat> was I forgot to weigh my hand spun cake before I started. So that was number one, the dumb thing. Uh, so I started to get really nervous knitting the first sock. This was the first one because it starts with all the yellow. Um, about 
running out of yarn and not having enough for the second sock. So I weighed it and like was pretty conservative and I knit the sock up and I bound off right there at the top of this green where there's a, a distinct stripe there. And then I knit the second sock. And then I realized as I got to the same point on this sock where I had bound off, I still had 10 grams left. And I was like, well, I could still knit another five grams on each sock. So I did. <laughs> so I just carried on with the first sock and uh, continued it until I only had, well, six grams left. I wanted to leave a little one gram buffer, a one gram buffer. Um, and then I went back and unpicked my cast off and just knit up the rest. And I have a weird line there. They don't match. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it does not matter with these socks. They're just, they're crazy and ridiculous. And they're very cozy and squishy. I do have to say for like the sport weight hand spun sock, like this is a really nice pattern with the two by two rib, like the springy, the springiness of the hand spun and the ribbing. It's just like, mm, it's very luscious. Um, yeah, so new pair of socks. Oh, the other thing is about these is the fiber content is 100% BFL, non-superwash, no nylon. So we'll see. I'm curious. I'm very curious. <clears throat> I recently saw a video from Emma Robertson of um, Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company, and she was talking about knitting no nylon socks and how you should make the foot a little bit longer because you need to account for the felting that's going to happen as you wear it, um, which I did not know about whenever I was knitting these socks, but <laughs> the foot is just a little bit too long. Um, so I think inadvertently I knit them exactly right. Um, I mean, they still fit my foot, but whenever I pull them on the heel kind of goes over my heel a little bit and I just have to like zhuzh it back. Um, so I think definitely if this felts up a little bit, that's going to fit just like perfectly. And I'm hoping that if it felts up a little bit, I won't get holes like I do in all of my superwash socks. Because if that's the case, it's a whole new ball game, y'all. If you have any experience with um, hand spun socks or no nylon socks, non superwash socks, um, I'd be really interested to know. Let me know uh, down in the comments how those held up. So that, those are my only FOs for this, this go round. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you might recall last time I was also working on a test knit that also had a deadline and it was not listed amongst my finished objects. That is very true. Major, major test fail. Oh, major test fail. Oh, this is the Joni pullover from um, Claire Briggs. What is her podcast called? Flossy Nets. Um, I think that's also the company name. I think it's published under Flossy Nets. Uh, but she has a lovely podcast as well. Oh, you asshole cats. Snag my fucking yarn. Right. Uh, yeah, so this is the Joni Pullover. It is knit in John Arbin Yarnadelic in the colorway Nobody Knows. Um, this is the yarn recommended for the pattern. Lovely. Gorgeous. The heather in this is just unbelievable. It's like iridescent. Um... Yeah, beautiful pattern, very well, well written and detailed pattern. My brain does not read those details. I messed up so many times and it being a test net, it's just like, oh, was that me? Was that the pattern? And it was almost always me. There were a couple of times where I was able to put something into the pattern and be like, hey, is this correct? I feel like it's missing something here. Like, I think these numbers are wrong. And 
it was wrong. So they fixed it. And I was like, okay, good. Like I did my good little test knitter duty and like caught errors, <laughs> but I didn't finish in time at all. Um, I honestly, I thought that the test knit went until the end of October. Is that true? No, I thought it went until the end of September, but apparently it ended up in like the middle of September. <laughs> Like I got a, a message one day and it's like, oh, like the test that is technically over, but the release date's been pushed back. So if you're still knitting, like keep going. Um, and I was like, oh shit, it's over already. <laughs> I thought I still had two weeks. Whoops. Yeah. So major, major test that or fail. Don't know that I'll be signing up for a test it again because I clearly cannot keep to my word to finish something on time um but yeah <laughs> so i have one sleeve done i have the body done it's it's lovely uh i tried it on and it it's fitting just so elegantly so far the the sleeve is quite fitted but the body has just a little bit of ease um, and i can tell especially once this blocks out that it'll drape just so nicely um, so I still have one sleeve to go and then ribbing around the v-neck. So I did weigh my yarn before I knit my sleeve. So I know that this sleeve took exactly 50 grams of yarn, which is a nice even number. Um, so what I need to do is this weekend is my, my plan to go and pick up around the neckline, go ahead and knit the, um, the ribbing. Puppy is rolling around next to yarn. He's fine. Uh, and then I'll at least have an accurate uh, yardage count of how much it took me to knit this size sweater, right? Um, yeah, and then I just have to knit the other sleeve. Which frankly, I like I was trying really hard to finish this on time and then I got that notice that it was like already over. So I kind of lost, <laughs> lost some of my motivation for that. Um, but I was like cranking through the sleeve. I knit this sleeve in like two and a half days. So anyway, and then I was like, well, if I miss the deadline on this one, I want to finish this before the festival. And then I missed my deadline on that one too. Oh God. Yeah. It's bad. Um, yeah. So now that this is done, this is now my sweater priority knit. So uh, this should be finished up in the next week or so, I would guess. Famous last words. Will it still be a whip next time? Tune in to see. <laughs> yeah, so I've been casting some things off, eh? Um, cast off some socks, cast off a sweater, about to cast off another sweater. And we all know how the rule goes. You cast off one sweater, that means you get to cast on a new one. So, <coughs> I actually already have one of those sweaters cast on. I haven't pulled this out in quite a while. Last time I pulled it out was for this podcast. <coughs> I haven't touched it since then. But we're coming back to it. This is the Poet sweater by Sari Norlin. I am like 15 rows into it. It's a very uh, in-depth lace pattern. Oh, I was going to bring over the book. It's it's out of uh, Lane Magazine. I was going to bring over the book and show you the pattern page. It's like a double page spread of like tiny print is the chart. And it's like a little bit intense. And I kind of need to like blow it up and make a photocopy so I could mark all over it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, Cause like I was doing okay keeping with it. Cause of course the, the chart is like increasing out because this is starting at the neckline and it's increasing out the yoke. Um, so those rows are shorter. The pattern is shorter. <laughs> uh, so yeah, as it was starting 
<clears throat> and I was starting to get like deeper into the chart. It's like, I'm not going to be able to like follow this all the way across. Like this is just stupid. So we're going to come back to this. This is going to be like my winter net, my winter challenge net. Now that it's, you know, time for hibernation and long, dark mornings with a few cups of coffee, figure out that complicated stuff, you know. So that's coming back very soon. And I did show the yarn for this a few times ago, uh, but it's coming back soon. I have not swatched yet. This is going to be for the tessellated vest. I am going to use some of my hand spun and some of my naturally dyed yarn. Um, it does require a third color. It requires a third skein. My plan is to dye a skein of yarn in marigold and just like get as orangey fall as I can get and have that be my third color. I have a new, um, base that I'm trying out. I just have one sample skein. Uh, so I think that'll be perfect. I'm going to dye that one up in marigold and then I'll be able to knit a garment out of it and really, you know, get a good idea of the yarn base. So I'm really excited about this. I keep seeing stuff about the tessellated vest, the tessellated pullover because everybody's at Rhinebeck this weekend and it was the Rhinebeck sweater. Um, so I'm really kind of like itching to to make one. <laughs> All that peer pressure. Uh, so yeah, I need to get back out in my dye studio and get that going. Um, I haven't been out there since the Wool's Fest because uh, honestly, I was tired and I was dog sitting five dogs. Well, three dogs, two of them are mine. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to acquisitions, I guess. Uh, my dad went to Paris, lucky him, and he brought me back this bag. <laughs> and he brought me back this bag, little zipper pouch to go with it, which is like the perfect size for socks. And I got another bag, <laughs> all the tote bags for all the knitting projects from Paris. Excuse you, little, ba little boy. They'll see more. Um, but, aha. In here, we have Franche yarn. It's a uh, Bergerie de France. La laine Francois. Francais. La laine Francais. I don't speak French. Uh, it is a 100% Merino yarn. It is um, Ocotex, which I believe is the um, eco-friendly superwash treatment. Hey, buddy, see more. Chill. Uh, from what I can gather from the back with not speaking French, uh, it's <laughs> Ocotex certifi, certificate, uh, Fia tri uh, knitting. Tricoter, Fabrique, Fabrics, Sans Produit Kimaki, so no chemical products, right? Product for the family and baby. La familia et baby. Do not speak French. Um, but that's what I gathered. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a whole thing in here. Uh, preparation, uh, assembly. Uh, yeah, I'll have to do like a Google Translate on that or something. Anyway, um, it's DK weight. It's 100% Merino. It's in this lovely sort of sagey green color. And uh, naturally he got me enough... Uh, to do like nothing. Um, <laughs> and he said it to it, whatever he gave it to me, he's like, it's probably not enough to do anything with, but <laughs> I figured you could do something with it. Oh my God. <laughs> so it's four balls of this. These are 50 gram balls. It's 147 yards per 50 grams. Um, so just shy of 300 yards per 
100 grams. <clears throat> it is listed as a DK, um, but I would say that's bordering into sportish. And looking at this yarn, it, it seems like you could, you could sub that for a sport. It's got a whole lot of bounce in it. I mean, it's like a, one of these like eight plies or some ridiculousness. Yeah, I think it's an eight ply. Uh, so it's just like, it's super round, super fine, super soft, super bouncy. Um, and I need to figure out what to do with it. So I have four of them, which means total, I'm just shy of 600 yards. And my first thought was summer top. Um, I'm not the tiniest lady. So it, that's a challenge. <laughs> 600 yards for even a summer top. I mean, I don't know. So I haven't narrowed it down to four patterns and I need your help. <laughs> first option, which seems like the most obvious and most straightforward option that I'm considering is to make a Tulsta tee with it uh, because that's for DK. I want to knit one anyway um, and I would just have to do stripes. And I think this with like a white or just a natural sort of cream um, as the stripe would look like real nice, real classy, right? Um, and, you know, have this be the main color and then fill in with stripes and then I could have a Tulsta tee. Um, out of this lovely soft merino. Of course, that means I have to buy more yarn. Yeah. <laughs> it does mean I have to buy more yarn. So that's option number one. Option number two. Oh, and the Tulsta tee is also a pattern by Rebecca Klo, who is also the designer of the Corin cardigan. Um, She's a relatively new designer. She's been out for like a year now. She just had her like first year design anniversary. And she's released some stupid amount of patterns and I want to knit every single one of them. And she just needs to slow down because I cannot knit that fast. <laughs> okay, so that's option number one, Tolsta T. Option number two, the Amos T from Pacific Knot. <coughs> hey, Seymour, no, no. Um, and this I would need to alter a little bit so according to the yardage that they have listed it looks like they don't have the sizing listed out completely um, so you'd really have to buy the pattern I think to get the complete picture of the yardage you need uh, but it looks like about 650 yards uh, would get me that T, which I have less than 600, just less than 600. So my thinking for that was since this is supposed to be a reversible T anyway, where you can wear the V-neck in the front or the V-neck in the back, then why don't I just put the V-neck on the front and the back and then I'll use less yard, right? And since it's only about 50 yards that I'm off, like maybe that would work. <laughs> so that's a thought. That's option number two. Option number three is the Gallus top from Audrey Borrego. Uh, she is also known as Yarn Flake. She has a podcast uh, that she does in English and in French. Um, and yeah, again, I would need to make some pretty heavy uh, modifications to this one to make it work. As it is, it's calling for about 850 yards for my size, but I don't really like how long this top is anyway. So I was thinking, well, what if I just do one repeat, just drop the whole bottom half of it and then just work into some ribbing there underneath that first well, the second diamond, right? So like after you've done your first repeat and just work that into some ribbing and have it be more of like a cropped tank, not super cropped, I don't want it super cropped, um, 
but it would be way shorter. I could probably get away with the yardage. I mean, we're talking 250 yards, but I'm also talking about knitting this like a third of, a third less, like two thirds the size that it is, right? So that's a possibility, that's option number three. <laughs> option number four is a shrug. And this, as is, calls for 640 yards. <clears throat> it's a one size fits all DK weight shrug. It looks really cute in all of the pictures, but then I keep thinking to myself, but would you wear a shrug? But would you wear a shrug? And I'm not sure. So since I'm only maybe 50 yards off on that one, I think pretty easily I could do one less repeat of this, uh, you know, edging, ribbing, texture, pattern, whatever that is, or knit the depth just a, an inch, inch and a half less depth, and it would probably be enough yard. So that's option number four. What do you guys think? To be fair, I'm not gonna cast this on until next year, like spring, February, March, something like that, um, because I have other things I wanna knit. I wanna knit the Poet and the Tessellated Vest, and then once those are done, I could bring in this for a summer knit um, and find another sweater at that time. Oh, I already have one picked out. I already have one picked out. Uh, so I signed up for the Sadvent, which is an advent that comes out in January uh, from Nervous Fiber. I've gotten some sock yarn from her before, like a little sock set, and I just love all the colors she does. They're like really moody and love it. Anyway, so she does this Sadvent, which I think is just the cutest freaking thing. Uh, it comes out in January. It's like the first two weeks of January, so... Um, it's getting you through the doldrums. It's getting you through the doldrums, right? That's why it's a sad bet. Um, and apparently statistically like January 14th is the saddest day of the year or something. Is that true? Anyway, uh, so Rebecca Klo of the Crayamea, again, she needs to slow down because this is only gonna be like potentially the third that I can knit of hers and she's already released like 10 patterns. Crazy, crazy. Um, oh yeah, she is designing a sweater currently based off of the sad vent that she got last year. <clears throat> so it's, <laughs> it's a 14 stripe advent. I'm like, well, I'm getting that exact one. And she's like designing a cardigan. It's called the Daft Days cardigan. So like, that's definitely gonna be, you know, a new year cast on for me. So that's already planned out too. So like my knitting, oh my God. And, and you guys, okay. So down in the comments, tell me what I should make out of this. I'm gonna mull it over for a while. Um. I also keep agreeing to knit things for people. Uh, I was at a happy hour a few weeks ago and a friend came up behind me and she was like, oh, I just wanted to say how much I love your, you know, your knitting, you're so talented, all this stuff. Would you want to knit a sweater for my dog? I was a couple beers in and I was like, I love dog, sure. So I agreed to that. So um, yeah, I have a dog sweater knit coming up. Um, I also have a, oh, I really did to get to work on this one, uh, a hand spun hand knit hat project for a friend who again came to me with just raw wool and said, Hey, would you want to like dye and spin and knit me a hat? And I was like, yeah, sure. What? What? It's fine. <laughs> He's a colleague, like. Uh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but I need to get cracking on that because it's going to start getting chilly here pretty soon. Um, I've dyed some of the fleece. I have plans for some more dyeing of the fleece, and then I'll need to start spinning. But we'll get to that next. We're just one thing at a time.
yeah, so I've agreed to both of those projects without really thinking about the time that it's going to take me to make them, just agreeing because they sounded like fun projects. I've never even met this dog. I don't know how big the dog is. I can knit in chunky. Get some, get some big chunky. It'll be fine. Uh, anyway, I think that's it for now. Um, it's fall time. The leaves have been turning. So I'll leave you with a little bit of wandering around in the forest uh, with three dogs it's before I got the other two. <laughs> It's been crazy. The other two dogs are supposed to go home on Tuesday. I'm a little bit skeptical. Um, if the date was told to me correctly, we'll find out on Tuesday. <laughs> if somebody shows up to take these dogs out of my house, it was Tuesday. If not, I don't know. We might be stuck for another day. Anyway. I'm very much looking forward to that though, and having a nice quiet house again with just my two giant dogs and just two my my two crazy cats. And that's it's supposed to get all fall and like rainy next week. So definitely I think I'm gonna do some couch cuddling and get some knitting done next week. Um right now it's gorgeous outside and I need to go and just like sit on my porch and bask in it as long as I can. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, that was more stuff to talk about than I thought I had to talk about. So that's it for today. Of course, the puppy has finally fallen asleep now that I'm stopping. So happy crafting wherever you are. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.